Hello, my name is Jack Aquilina. I'm the Secretary of the Endeavour Virtual Lodge number 944 of the United Grand Lodge of Victoria, and welcome to our instructional video. This video is designed to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to prepare your space and set up your computer so you can access our first historic virtual lodge meeting on the 31st of January 2019. Whether you're a member of the lodge or a visitor, this step-by-step -step guide will give you a chance to prepare your space and your computer so you can get the most out of our historic meeting. Virtual lodge meetings are a reasonably new concept. They've been running in Canada for about 10 years, but the meeting we're having on the 31st of January is going to be the first time in Australian history when a lodge, a Masonic lodge, has met entirely online. That means there'll be no lodge room. We won't meet in a specific location, but we'll all be based, whether at home or at work, in a secure room and environment to participate in the opening and closing of a lodge in the first degree and the instruction of Masonic education. We naturally want you to take the most out of this experience. We'll f you'll find that you'll probably enjoy it. In fact, our participation in the Castle Island Virtual Lodge meetings of Canada have found that it is a Masonic experience unlike anything else that is interactive, brings together brethren from all around the world to a single location to enjoy what we love, and that is our craft. So, we hope you enjoy this instructional video and that it helps you get the most out of your Virtual Lodge experience. But if you have any questions arising from it, you're welcome to email us at endeavorvirtual at gmail.com. The first step of getting prepared to attend any online lodge meeting is to ensure that you have these following two things checked off. First, you need an appropriate environment. And second, you need appropriate technology. Let's deal with the environment first. Attending a virtual lodge meeting is really no different to attending a regular lodge meeting at a bricks and mortar building. Why is it no different? Because we are, and always will be, a regularly constituted lodge that will be practicing the ancient customs of our craft. As such, it is important that anyone participating in a lodge meeting is contained themselves in an appropriately tiled environment. Therefore, we adopt a concept called self-tiling. So the first step to attending any virtual meeting is to ensure that the location in which you are hoping to attend from is secure from non-Freemasons attending. This might be an office space in your work of workplace. It might be in a room in, at appropriate in your house or some other location where you can attend without anyone who is not a Freemason being able to become entitled to our privileges. Remember your obligation. The burden rests on you to ensure that you are doing the right thing. And we know as a good Freemason, and with common sense, you'll be able to appropriately tile your location. Let's use this location for example. I'm on the second floor of a double story building. The only entrance to this part of the location is through the staircase. Having informed my family and friends that I have a private meeting to attend and that I don't wish to be disturbed, this location is now appropriate to attend a lodge meeting because it is secure. You should do the same thing. If it's at work, sure you have a private room with good lighting that can be locked or secured so you won't be interrupted. And the same at home. If you have a bedroom or study, or even just a lounge room, ensure that you attend in a secure and privileged manner. Brethren, securing your space is an important obligation. Although, in the Endeavour Virtual Lodge's case, we don't practice the signs of the order, we do open and close the lodge in accordance with ancient custom. But more importantly, we want our lodge room to be a place where members feel safe in a sanctuary to contribute their ideas and to make their thoughts known, which is preserved when we ensure we have a safe and tiled location. After you've tiled your location and you have an appropriate space in which to join our meetings, having the necessities for your video capturing to, and auditory services to work is essential. What do I mean by that? Well, you're going to need a room that has appropriate lighting, 
so that when you are appearing via video camera, you will be able to be seen appropriately. Lighting that ensures it shows your face clearly and your environment is an important way for us to know that you're getting the most out of your virtual lodge experience. A quiet location is also essential because in a quiet location, you'll be able to be heard when you speak or contribute. So having a space that is quiet and well lit whilst also being secure is essential to your participation in our virtual lodge meetings. Aside from the environment, having ticked that box, you need to make sure you have the appropriate equipment. Now, if you own a laptop, a smartphone, or an iPad, you'll find that your equipment has already been provided for. Your laptop or smartphone or iPad will have inbuilt a webcam that will be appropriate so we can see you, and also a microphone so we can hear you. If you don't have a laptop, smartphone, or an iPad or tablet, then you'll need to acquire a microphone and a webcam that will fit and suit your desktop. If you look up on the screen up here, you can see that I have purchased a webcam that has an inbuilt microphone. That webcam cost me about $90 from JB Hi-Fi, and you too can purchase the same, or something equivalent. The essential part is we should be able to see you and we should be able to hear you in order for you to get the most out of the meeting and to ensure that we know that you are a regular Freemason. So, in addition to that equipment, the best thing that we can advise you to do is also to use a pair of headphones. Headphones ensure that only you can hear what's happening in a meeting clearly and also ensures that the sound that is emitted from your speakers does not filter back through the microphone and therefore cause an audio loop that would disturb the experience of others. Whilst generally you'll be muted during a meeting unless you're speaking, you can make yourself and everyone else's lives so much easier by acquiring a pair of headphones. Whether they be the headphones that came with your mobile phone or something that you've purchased somewhere else, headphones are essential to a safe, secure and of course more enjoyable virtual lodge experience. You will need the internet, of course, to access our Lodge meetings. Just ensure that if you can, you don't have any other videos or downloads happening in the background so you can secure the best connection to enjoy the best quality virtual Lodge meeting. So that is how you set up your space, tile your environment, and have the appropriate equipment to enable you to have the best virtual Lodge experience. Setting up your computer so you can access a virtual Lodge meeting. The first thing you need to do is access the internet. As you can see on the screen in front of you, my com computer uses Google Chrome. You might use Internet Explorer or another browser to access the internet, but the key is to first start by clicking on that. Once you're in your browser, you should get to Google. Usually this is set as your home page. If it isn't, then you should type www.google.com and you'll see a page similar to the one that you can see in this video. The next step is to go to the Zoom website. You can do this by simply typing Zoom Z -O -M, into the Google search box. As you see, you get a number of results when you do this. The one to click is the second result, which has the website zoom.us. Click on that. This is the Zoom website. Once you find that you're on the Zoom website, you are now required to download the client, which will enable you to use Zoom as a platform to access our virtual meetings. So first, you need to put your mouse over the Resources tab in the top right-hand corner of your screen, and you'll see the drop-down box, and the first option, hover your mouse over it, which is the Download Zoom Client link. Once it's highlighted, click on that. This directs you to another page, which gives you a number of options for clients that you can download as part of the Zoom platform. The one we're concerned with is the first option, which is Zoom Client for Meetings. Simply 
hover your mouse over the download box icon and click. This will, depending on your browser, download a file which will help you install the Zoom application. If you're using Google Chrome, you'll see the drop down at the bottom. If you're using Internet Explorer, a drop down in the centre of the page should appear asking you whether you want to open or save the file. Make the choice accordingly. Once you've located the downloaded file, click on it twice and you'll see that it is installing the Zoom platform on your computer. This should be very quick. Once it's installed, the Zoom Cloud Meetings platform will automatically open. As you can see here, it's opened on my screen and has two options, join a meeting or sign in. If you wish, you can sign in or create your own profile, or if you want to be um, simple, feel free to just close the box and exit your browser. Now let's assume this is the night of a lodge meeting and you want to attend a virtual lodge meeting from home. What you first are going to need is your notice paper. This notice paper should be emailed to you or received in the Endeavour Virtual Lodge newsletter. For example, this is our notice paper for our January 31st meeting. As you can see on the side that says agenda of the notice paper, at the bottom of the agenda items, is a link to a meeting. As it says here, to get access to the tiled online lodge meeting, click on this link below. All you have to do is click. Once you click, this will open your browser and direct you to the meeting. This will automatically open via your Zoom application the meeting. And as you can see, you can see me sitting there at my desk and I am now access the Zoom meeting. The first thing you want to do is click join with computer audio and that concludes our step-by-step -step instruction on how to set up the Zoom client on your computer and how to get access to our Lodge meetings for the first time. In this segment, we're going to be teaching you what to do once you've accessed the Zoom meeting after you've successfully installed the client and accessed the meeting via the link on the notice paper. When you access the meeting, you'll see something similar to what you are seeing on screen now. This is the Zoom platform. Generally, we will automatically set the settings so your webcam and microphone turn on. But in case that isn't the case, as you can see here, you can't see me, I'm going to show you how to navigate the Zoom platform so you can turn on your microphone and turn on your camera. In the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see Start Video. That is the button to click. This should, assuming your technology is set up correctly, start your webcam and now you can see me on the right hand side. If people are saying they can't hear you, you'll see on the left hand side you have of course your microphone. If you have multiple microphones for some reason or someone can't hear you although that is green, the little drop down box there if you click that you'll have options as to what microphones are available and what speakers. Play around with those until people can hear you and you can hear them. Same also with your video camera. If you have multiple cameras or multiple inputs, they'll display there. So just as a basics, you can see that um, David and I both have headphones um, and we both have microphones set up. So theoretically, you should be able to hear David when he speaks. So David, say hello to our viewers. Hello viewers. So David's got good lighting, you can see his face. Um, in a normal lodge meeting situation, he would have the door in the background closed. And as you can see, you can see him, you can hear him, and he's ready to contribute. Similarly with my room, you can see me and hear me. The lighting is okay. One thing I might improve in future would be, if you can see the mouse in the background, they've got that window that's emitting light. If I draw down those blinds, it would be less distracting. Remember, because the lodge room is made up of our individual spaces, um, having a space that is clear and not distracting is probably the best way to go. 
one thing I will add, Jack, uh, if I may, if you have a light source like I do, a window next to you, if that's open, it will basically darken you out. So making sure that blinds are drawn so you have appropriate lighting is, is very, very important. Positioning of the camera is also important. Um, generally, if you've got a laptop or a smart device, as we discussed earlier, you'll be in a position where it's easy to adjust because it's designed to face you automatically. If you're using an external camera like I am, make sure that you grab the top half of your torso, uh, try and uh, ensure that your face is visible, and as, as David is as well, shoulders are in the centre of the screen. As we discussed when we're talking about what to wear to lodge, the example of you wearing regalia is important, but as we can illustrate here, you will only see generally the top half of a body. A person generally doesn't stand in a virtual lodge meeting, and everything is done from a seated position. Once you are in the meeting, and the meeting is being conducted, there are a number of things you can do to engage with the other uh, participants while the meeting is in situ. Basically what happens is when a person speaks, although we can't demonstrate it to you here, their face will fill the screen. If we go to speak of you, you will only see David at the moment. That's only because there's only two participants. But if David was speaking, or I was speaking, on your screen, you would see that person there. The system automatically picks up on who is talking and their face is displayed. So it makes it easy to navigate. If you want to see a view of all the people who are participating, you can click on gallery view and you'll see the multiple people. Usually, uh, if you have 30 people, it will have pages worth of faces in which you can see who is in the meeting with you. If you would like to talk to people during the meeting, you can use the chat box here. Now, by clicking on the chat icon at the bottom, you can see that you can address something to everyone or you can go privately as well. So I, for example, I'm sending a message to David saying, hi, David. So David and I can have a private conversation during the meeting. Whilst at first you might think that's unusual because in a lodge room, you wouldn't generally have private conversations while a ceremony is in, in play. One of the beautiful things about a virtual lodge is that because our so our, our meetings are focused around education and guest speakers. Usually conversation of this kind is a polite way of talking to one another and exchanging ideas when a presentation is in place. It also provides a handy place to report any problems if you can't hear someone properly or if there are any issues. Instead of unmuting your mic and interrupting the speaker, it is best to type it in this box here. Also, you can exchange ideas about what the speaker is talking about or ask questions without having to unmute your mic. Aside from the chat box, you are obviously able to ensure that a meeting is either being recorded or not. This particular meeting is not being recorded, but generally speaking, the, at least the presentation segment of our meetings will be recorded for future viewing in a secure environment. If it is recorded, you'll see after this, in the top left-hand corner this box which says recording, and David should also be able to see that as well. I can. So that is the basics on how to use Zoom. It is a very easy platform to arrange. As you can see, all the things we've spoken about up to this point, about getting the environment right, having the equipment right, dressing appropriately, and managing the software um, lead to this point where you can engage in what is an interactive lodge room experience. So David, do you have any final thoughts or anything to add for um, our viewers on tips and tricks to engage in a virtual meeting? Probably the biggest tip yeah, I would say would be to log into the meeting ahead of time. It might be yourself and one other person, but it gives you a good chance to work out any technological issues that may occur like the webcam not working or the mic not working, rather than logging in at the time and then potentially missing part of the meeting. I think that's good advice. I think usually we open the meeting up at least an hour before. Um, you can log in any time before the host does. So say I'm hosting the meeting, um, and you can log in any time before. Just keep in mind that when you do log in, you might be muted on the way in. So as I showed you earlier, adjusting the mute, the microphone settings in the bottom are very important. During the meeting, everyone will be muted. Usually for the opening and closing, the officers will be unmuted. Um, but generally, only the worshipful master or the presenter who is speaking will be um, are active on the microphone. If you do want to speak during a lodge meeting, you can raise your hand, you can type in the chat box, or you can unmute yourself, but it's best to do the latter rather than the former. 
In terms of your circumstances around participating in the meeting, of course, one person speaking at a time is the best way to go, but we want you to participate and we want you to get the most out of your virtual lodge experience. As you can see through this demonstration, participating in a virtual lodge is something new, but it's also something that's very, very easy and comes very naturally. You'll find that despite the fact that our rituals were written 300 years ago, they're actually very well suited to a lodge environment such as this. So we hope that you got a lot out of this portion of the instructional video. Thank you, David, for your help. And we look forward to seeing how successful you will be on January 31st. Thank you for watching this first instructional video to assist you to attend the first regular meeting of the Endeavour Virtual Lodge on the 31st of January 2019. As I said at the start of this video, the 31st of January will be the first time in the history of Freemasonry in the Southern Hemisphere that a lodge has conducted its business 100% virtually and online. This is exciting, and an exciting time for our craft, as we take what we love and adapt it to the 21st century. This instructional video has assisted you in not only being able to attend the meeting, but to set your computer up and give you tips on ways in which you can create the right environment to get the most out of a virtual meeting. Remember, a secure, safe and tiled location with good lighting, a webcam, microphone, and headphones, and also with the technology relevantly installed on your computer, you will be able to access one of our meetings. So thank you for your patience. Thank you for the taking the time to learn on how to attend our meetings, and we look forward to attending lodges with you virtually in the coming years. Good luck, and thank you.